Delighted to say we're joined with McLean CV with Darren Fullerton, the sports reporter with the uh, the Daily Mirror. We couldn't get your father, he's too expensive, <laughs> we just had to get you, so what can we say? <laughs> Looking forward to the Irish League, there's always a buzz before it starts, isn't there? I must admit, you almost have this thing, when the, the league's finished, you sort of draw a breath and the next thing is back, almost yeah. as if it hasn't been away. Yeah, and I, I, I anticipate a really exciting title race this, this season, Adrian. I think it could be compelling stuff and I envisage two or three horse race and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out the maybe three clubs I'm talking about, Cliftonville, Linfield Crusaders. I think Cliftonville obviously will be out to retain the title. But Linfield will be right up there and I think Crusaders will be better for, for their experiences of recent times. So, and I think you look at the margin of points difference, the, the number of points that the title has been won in recent years, I think last year it was eight points previous season 14, year before that 11. I think it'll be a lot closer this season, it'll be a lot tighter and it could go to the wire. Interesting, the likes of Liam Beckett and Stephen Bacon, those lads, they, they saw it as a two horse race. They, they thought Linfield and Cliftonville. They thought Crusaders might do well in the Cup. Yeah. But it's nice to hear and interesting to hear that you think that they're going to have a significant role to play. Well, the only question mark over Crusaders, maybe they're one or two players short of a championship winning side, but you look at the, since the league went 12 teams in 2008 they've been in the top four four of those five seasons and the last three they've they've been second twice so they have quality throughout that team do they have enough quality consistency strength and depth to go 38 games that's the question but I know talking to Stephen Baxter he hopes that the experiences that they've they've had in recent times and going close a couple of times will hold them in good stead heading into this campaign Can I ask you a uh a question is David Jeffrey under a bit of pressure if he doesn't deliver this season after what was a poor uh, season for them and he's brought in so many top class players now yeah it's incredible it's incredible to think that we could be even mentioning David in the same breath as pressure but he's been there 16 years I think only three years as he three seasons has he gone trophyless and one of those was last season so there will be a spotlight in Windsor Park this season but I think he's signed well, he's brought in seven new, new faces, a lot of high profile signings, the likes of Andy Waterworth, Sean Ward, Johnny Tuffy. I think Andy Waterworth could be a big player for them this season, scored a lot of goals here at the Oval last season. Big signing, gives Linfield something that maybe haven't had in the last couple of seasons, pace in behind. So I think David will be highly motivated this season to hit back and he will have his players highly motivated. And I expect a big season from Linfield. He doesn't worry about pressure, sure, synonymous with him, you know. I wouldn't have so. Like, I, I've seen David in occasions whenever he's gone on and done, and, and had very successful uh, runs with Linfield where fans have been crying out for him to be, to be given the chop after two to three games. It just seems to be synonymous with Linfield sometimes. It is, and, and they're, they're under this sort of intense spotlight every season. I, I've always said that I don't think David's achievements at Linfield will be fully appreciated. Until, until he he's gone, yeah, until exactly. he's gone, maybe ten years down the line, twenty years down the line, we will reflect on what he has achieved in the last number of years. I think it's at six doubles and seven seasons before last season. I mean, it's only then we'll think, my goodness, what a manager he was and what a team he had at that time. And but I, I think he's reinvigorated the side this year. He's introduced a lot of quality into the side, and as I say, I, I can see them right up there this season again. And they're going to have an early test too, because it's not too long before they play at Cliftonville. And Cliftonville, they clearly were the best side. I saw a lot of our ice league last year. Cliftonville were the best side mm -hmm. that I saw on view, you know. Yeah, and yet, things went for them. They had no injuries. They had no really concerns. They got everything sort of went for them. You need your luck. Yeah. And it's going to be intense there, isn't it? I think Cliftonville won at a canter last season. They played this fluid brand of football. It's the best brand of football I've seen the Irish League for, for a long team, time. Other, t other teams have been very effective with their football, but to watch Cliftonville last season was a joy. And you look, I think they won 27 of their 38 league games. They were scoring an average of two and a half goals per league game. They conceded the least number of goals in the league. Tommy Breslin is a superb team at his disposal they're a real spine you look at Connor Devlin and Nets the likes of Mark Smith at centre back I don't think there's a better central midfield pair than, than Barry Johnson and Ryan Cantley and up front you've got Liam Boyce and Joe Gormley who scored 66 goals between them last season so there's a lot of quality there 
I think the only question mark over Cliftonville is Cliftonville themselves. It's complacency. Do, do they have the hunger to climb the mountain again, to go again? And that's probably the only question mark over them because you look post war, I was checking this, I think other than Cliftonville and Glentorn, the only team that has managed to retain a championship was Portadown in 1990 1991. So only three teams post war have retained a championship, and two of those were the big two. So that's the challenge that stands before Cliftonville this season. Can they go again and, and can they make it back to back titles? I'm very impressed there because unlike your father, you've done your research for this year. No, he gave me the research. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, last last season Ball and Mallard were the were the, the new kids in the block. They did so well. Yeah. If you were if you were asked to put the pin in your colour, uh, what team would you see maybe that could light up the league as well, away from what you would call your top three? I can't see any any other team muscling their way in, in the title race. I, I expect a decent season, a good season from Cole Rain. I think Oren Kearney has recruited well there. He's lost Curtis Allen, but he's brought in the likes of Gary Brown, Stephen Carson. He's also kept Stephen Laurie and Howard Beverland. And Laurie, well documented, he was talking to, to Linfield. So he has got a really good side there at Cole Rain. Be interested to see how Portadown go. They've probably one of the best players in the league in my mind, Kevin Braniff, real creative technician and Gary Twig, a top goal scorer. Do they have the quality to, to climb higher? They finished seventh last year. Ronnie will want to see them a lot higher this year. Be interesting to see what Ards and Warren Point bring to the division. Great to see Ards back in the top flight. Warren Point, I was reading I think three years ago they were playing in the Mid Ulster League. So mm -hmm. it'll be great to see them in the Danske Bank Premiership. They have a tough enough start, though. I think the first two games they played in Ghana and Ards, but in their first seven, they have Cliftonville, Linfield, Crusaders at home. So it'll be and interesting. When you say at home, at home is Lingana and Swift too. Yes, yeah, which automatically yeah. is a, a disadvantage. I feel that they're, you know, they're not at home with their home fans. Yeah, that that will be tough for them. So it'll be interesting to see how they they're going to hit the have to hit the ground running, but. If you look at Ards and Warren Point, the two clubs that have come up, survival will be everything to them. And I think most pundits, myself included, journalists and so on in the media, we will probably write off Warren Point. But let's not forget 12 months ago, we were writing Balna Mallard off. Yeah, uh -huh. And they finished fifth. <laughs> so who knows, you know, but... Well, if you're going to write in the Daily Mirror now, are you going to be saying that uh, it's between those... I, I tell you what, in the Mirror, yeah. and you were asked, uh, and we were asking here in McLean's too, okay. Who's going to win the Irish League then? It's a very good question. I wish I had a good answer. <laughs> uh, I think I'd have to have Cliftonville as marginal favourites, but it's difficult to go again. In 1998, when they last won the title, the following season they finished second bottom. I'm not suggesting for one moment that that will happen to this Cliftonville uh -huh. side. In fact, it won't. But it's tough retaining a title. And you look at the players that Linfield have added, I think they'll be a lot closer. Crusaders are capable, capable of beating anyone in their day. It's a tough league, points are tough to get in this league. But if you're going to pin me down on it, and I had to put the conservatory on it or something, if I had a conservator, <laughs> Cliftonville. I'll go, I'll go with Cliftonville. <laughs> and then can I ask you as well, if teams are about to struggle, who would you see the teams that would struggle then maybe near the bottom? I suppose you have to look at the two clubs that have come up. Dungannon finished third bottom last season. I think above and beyond those three, I, I, I don't know, Glenavon were fourth bottom. I don't see Ballymena struggling. With all due respect to Warren Point, Point and Ards, I think their main focus will be staying in this division, and that could be difficult. You write about every week, you go to matches every week, it's about to start again too. Yeah. It's very enjoyable, isn't it? It's a good product, you know, Dan. It's a better product than people give it credit for, and I, I get fed up and frustrated sometimes that people maybe dismiss it out of hand. And I go every week and I'm seeing different teams every week, and it gives me a great overview of the league. And I maybe go to a game not expecting too much, and I come away thinking, that's one of the best games I've seen it, uh, on television or, or in, in, in real lifetime. But it's, I don't know, sometimes it is frustrating that the league doesn't get the credit it deserves, but I think Cliftonville play a very good brand of football, and I think this season could be very interesting. All right, thank you very much indeed. Okay. okay, you're better than you're done. <laughs>